The story of Mandy Stavick is the story of a young woman's disappearance from a tight-knit rural community. It's the story of a family devastated and a whole community devastated. It was a big deal. I was initially appointed sheriff in 2003. I went out and spoke with Mandy's mother, Mary, and told her that I was going to make every effort that we would solve this case. I don't think I ever believed, ever, that they would catch the guy. The murder of Mandy Stavick was a mystery, a decades-old cold case that left a small community on edge. It was so out of the realm of anything we could ever have expected. Only solved by the combined determination of loved ones, law enforcement, even strangers. The unexpected everyday item that would crack everything wide open nearly 30 years later and the shocking revelation of who committed the crime. We could possibly imagine it be somebody we knew. The Stavick family lived out in Acme, which is a little tiny town down Highway 9 in rural Whatcom County. It's rural, so it's um, not a lot out there. You know, open roads and um, lots of cows. You knew your neighbor, you talked to your neighbor. Everyone that lived out there, even today, knows about Mandy Stavick and what happened to her. Mandy had just graduated from high school. She was in her first year at Central Washington University. She came home for Thanksgiving break. Mandy left her home on the day after Thanksgiving in 1989. She wanted to get in a run. It was kind of in the late afternoon. She had a daily route that she used to jog uh, that took her down the road that her house was on, on Strand Road, uh, down to the Nooksack River and back. She went with their dog, Kyra, a German Shepherd dog. It was an older dog, but it was, uh, it was very protective of Mandy. I was panicked the minute she didn't get home on time. And then I was doubly panicked a few minutes later when the dog was there, and she wasn't. Any kind of missing person call is a 911 call. It requires immediate response. And a deputy will go out and talk to the reporting party. In any investigation like this, you're going to look at you know boyfriends, anybody that they might have had trouble with. Mandy's boyfriend was cleared after he gave a police statement. In any investigation like this, you'd have to figure out who Mandy was, what she was about. She was very everything. I don't know whether there are words to describe her. Mandy loved anything athletic. She could do things that I could never do. Um, she could jump on a horse bareback and take off running across the field. She loved softball. She loved track. She loved baseball. Um, she loved basketball. Everybody liked her, so she wasn't the typical student that you know may have one or two enemies. And the search went on for three days. She was found on the third day. Mandy was found on the south fork of the Nipsack River, probably close to five and a half, six miles from her house. There was a bend in the river and some debris, and the body was just hung up in the debris there. I saw her body. She was face down. She was just kind of suspended, just a little bit off the bottom. There was a branch there that was some debris that prevented her from floating any further downstream. She was naked except for shoes and socks on. The tennis shoes matched the description. <laughs> the detective that was with me dispatched himself uh, in a quick fashion to get to the family home to let her know we had found her. I wouldn't wor wish this on even my worst enemy. There's nothing, there is nothing worse. There's nothing worse than lo losing a child. The medical examiner determined Mandy's cause of death to be drowning. She'd suffered a head injury and had been sexually assaulted. They took DNA evidence from Mandy's body. They created a DNA profile of both Mandy and an unknown male. Time and time again, they would have a person of interest. They would question that person, but something would rule them out. They had a good alibi, or ultimately, their DNA did not match. This case dragged on. 
it becomes a cold case. But after, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, it's like, well, it's never gonna be solved. In 2013, a tip draws investigators' attention to Mandy's former neighbor, Tim Bass. The case had never, never left the thoughts of Mandy's friends. And so two women were talking about the case and talking about what a, a strange person Tim Bass was. And they decided, we should talk to the sheriff's office. They should look at him. Tim Bass came up as a suspect. So in 1989, Tim Bass lived on one side of Highway 9 on Strand Road, and Mandy Stavick lived on the other. He was a loner. He was a loner. He was quiet. My impression is kind of he was just a little bit of an odd, oddball. Tim moved out of the area shortly after the murder. It was in January of 1990. He had quickly gotten married and moved to Everson. I'm Gina Malone, and Tim Bass used to be my husband. He was very controlling and always told me what to do, what I could wear, what I couldn't wear, who I could talk to, who I couldn't talk to. Whenever he'd get mad, he would, like, come towards me like this with his fist. Um, he did shove me against the bathroom wall once and bruised my back. 2010, Gina had filed for a domestic violence protection order. That case was later closed because she rescinded the domestic violence order, and they stayed married. When detectives visited Gina and Tim in their home, they asked Tim to give a DNA sample. Tim said he wasn't going to give us a DNA, that he didn't trust the police. It was kind of like, OK, what's plan B? 2017, we decided to get a sample. We knew we'd have to do that surreptitiously. Detective Bowie approached where he worked. He was a route delivery person for France Breads. We went to Franz, and that's where I met Kim Wagner for the first time. I met Tim Bass when he came to work with me. If detectives could acquire an everyday item that has Tim's DNA on it, they could run it through the lab to see if it matches the DNA found on Mandy Stavick's body. I said, you need a water bottle? I'll get you a water bottle. I'm kind of an instant gratification, like dog with a bone. I, I need to know. We can't tell a person to get evidence for us, but if they were to bring something to us, we could take it from them and, and use that. That's not against the law. Nobody asked me to do it. I 100% volunteered to do it. If something happened to my daughter, I'd want someone to help me. And I, the thought of her mom never having an answer of who did that to her daughter, if I could help her find that piece, I wanted to do it. She watched Tim. They got a water cooler at their office, and he drank out of a plastic cup and threw it away. They threw it in the garbage in front of me, walked past into the bathroom. And I just, I looked in the garbage, and my heart was like, mm -hmm, you know, beating out of my chest. And I grabbed it, and I put it in my desk drawer. I think I waited a little bit, and then I texted Detective Bowie. I couldn't get it back to the office quick enough and down to the lab quick enough to have it tested. But would Tim Bass be a match? And would Mandy's mother find the justice she's seeking? Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.